Hey everybody, Ryan here, or Eminar Productions, and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars Summer 2020 General Grievous Starfighter. It's set number 75286 with 487 pieces, and the United States retails for 80 bucks. That is an insane price. LEGO did send me this set for free to review, so thank you very much to them for doing that. Speaking of that price tag, though, this has been touted as perhaps the most overpriced LEGO Star Wars set ever. It definitely underdelivers in quite a few areas, including value in my opinion just having seen all the pictures but of course we'll go through that and get a real feel of it as we build it and look at it in the flesh the set does include three minifigures all three of which are extremely disappointing to some people two of which extremely disappointing to me the obi-wan kenobi is a reuse that we saw on the duel on mustafar set again completely inaccurate to what you see in the utapal scene when grievous fights obi-wan so that doesn't make any sense for him to be in this set the airborne clone trooper is a nice figure it's a small update to the 2014 version that we've had. We haven't seen one in a while, but a lot of people were hoping this figure would have been a Phase 2 Commander Cody. It would have fit so much better in the set and honestly could have very well made the set worth that 80 bucks. And then finally, that General Grievous is going to be something that some people feel like should be tan, but in this case, they have as white, and I don't really care about that. That's a fine thing. The box art has the Darth Vader, which shouldn't be Darth Vader because it's an Episode 3 set, but LEGO didn't make a thing for Episode 3 box art, so I don't know what the deal with that is. The back of the box shows the Grievous Starfighter landed on Utapau, kind of on that platform. You got the Airborne Trooper just kind of over here, out of place, not really technically in that same scene, but still just there is nice. And then you have the Obi-Wan and Grievous fight going down. I figured let's just get this out of the way up front. First figure of three here is Obi-Wan Kenobi, Episode 3 version. However, whilst accurate to the set that this particular figure originally appeared in, which was the Dulan Mustafar set, this particular version of the figure as you can tell on the torso, has some very obvious marks that belong to Mustafar and not from anywhere else during the episode three movie. Utapau, he did not have these marks. His clothing was clean. It was not marked up at all. Lego has included a incredibly inaccurate figure in this case, and it's really sad to see them reuse a print here to cut costs on a set that I think is already crazily overpriced at $80. This is a huge reason I would uh, up front here say don't buy this set until they change it. If you're on the fence about this one, I think that this is a good time to save your money and wait and see if they actually do end up changing it because they have in the past changed a character out of a set because they felt it was wrong. I think this is a case even more so than in the original case that they should be taking this into consideration and really putting it in action. I don't see a reason not to do it. So hopefully we do get a newer torso print in a future iteration of the set. But as the set is now, you get this terribly inaccurate Mustafar style Obi-Wan. There's his second angrier looking face than the one on the front there. And then he also has the blaster that he did use to finish off General Grievous, which is a nice inclusion for the set. The Airborne Trooper here may be a bit under rated because both myself and probably a lot of you guys wanted to see a phase two commander cody in the set it would have made so much sense for the price that they've got the set at 80 bucks i think a phase two cody should have been in this set and that's undeniable that doesn't make this particular figure a bad figure though it's actually a really good airborne trooper it's a slight change from the version that we had in 2014 they've changed up the torso print quite a bit they've added some things and of course the little footprinting down there doesn't hurt nice addition for the figure that we didn't have on the previous version he also has his waist cape on which is sweet looks pretty nice and then a very clean little back print. The head underneath is actually the same one that we see on our 501st and 332nd troopers, so that's pretty cool to see. It's just kind of uniform amongst the clones right now with that clone trooper face that more closely resembles Jango Fett and the clones you see in the Clone Wars, I would say. And finally, we have, of course, General Grievous. And maybe the most off-putting thing about this figure, which is generally good, no pun intended, is the difference in the white color of the legs and the white color of the printing on the torso, arms, and head. You can see that it just has a very, very different color of white. It just is, and it's really hard to look past. It was something that I actually saw out of the box. You know, I was putting the figure together. I was like, whoa, I don't remember that. 
So I looked back on the 2018 version of this same figure. It turns out it is the same problem there. They are the exact same figure. It's not like something changed. So this is just a problem that's been multi-generational with this figure, unfortunately, and it's just not going to be fixed as far as I can tell. Notably, it wasn't a problem when the figure was tan. I pulled out my tan Grievous from 2010. Was not a problem. So maybe tan is the way to go with Grievous. But in this case, it's white. I like the look of the white one, but the difference in leg color just really is killer to me. The arms are actually one of the cooler things about this character if you've never had a lego general grievous they give him four arms and you can pose them up in different ways and make them do different things i still wish you could spin the lightsabers at the end of his hand here that would be like the ultimate final feature to add to a general grievous figure in my opinion is just being able to spin these around like he does in episode three but other than that it's a wonderful figure uh, those are my two little things i think they could make better about this particular minifig i said this a lot in my videos about summer 2020 sets when we had pictures of this before i actually had it in hand like i do now and i'll say the same thing now that i have it in hand versus what i was saying when i had only seen pictures of it i think this is genuinely a very very good, high quality build. That doesn't make it worth $80. That doesn't make the Obi-Wan figure any less accurate. That doesn't fix the white color on the Grievous. That doesn't fix the fact that Phase 2 Cody's not in the set. But this build is objectively a good build. And I think that is worth putting out there. You're not going to be disappointed by the build of this set. You'll just be disappointed that you spent 80 bucks on the set. I think that that's the best way to put it. They've done a lot of things different than what they did in years past with Grievous Starfighters. We'll start out with the landing function because I actually found that to be really fascinating so I was kind of playing around with it and so usually you know Grievous Starfighter most people are going to land it like that and be fine with it most kids won't really care but something they actually did that they kind of went out of their way for the accuracy of what you actually see in the films is they made this fin on the back and you can actually do this with the other ones but not to this degree of accuracy here the fin on the back drops back like this folds out and then you can actually drop the set down and oh wait no that doesn't make sense because on the back of the box, it shows the set where the fin is on the ground and it's landed. Wait, how does this work? You just push it down and it stays down. It's really cool. I thought at first that it was like false advertising because I put the set like this and I was like, wait, there's not enough weight in the back to make it like stay down. It's not going down. What's going on? Because I would pop it down now and now it stays down. So that's something I realized like, oh, that is actually really ingenious. And so the way that works actually is that you can see that there's a slight change in angle here. And basically it just goes and is supported by these here and then this piece in the back, and that's how uh, that works. It is a really cool factor about this set that I think may go underappreciated by a lot of people that are gonna be buying the set, but for those of you who've watched this review, now you know that that is a thing that this set can do and is very accurate to what you see in uh, episode three there, but that's pretty neat, I like that. It's got dual stud shooter action on the top of the set. You can just rip these off if you don't want them there. Honestly, it looks a little bit awkward when you remove it. You could probably just put some tiles or something there, but yeah, those are on there. They're stud shooters, they work like stud shooters, so if you push on them, they will fire off like that and you can reload them just as simply as you can shoot them. Very simple feature, nice for kids, not so great for display, but as I just showed there, some of the easier to remove uh, exterior stud shooters that come on Lego sets. They've used a lot of gold coloring for the accents on this set versus in years past, I think they would use kind of tan, but they've used a nicer gold color. And I actually really like the way that that looks with these flower pieces, these grill pieces, and then this kind of round Technic piece up underneath these gray cone pieces. It works out really well and is a nice accent color. There's some striping here with this darker orange, kind of like washed out orange. And then of course, dark tan as well in in there so you get that nice striping inside the set nice bit of color to add into the gray that the design has a lot of these side kind of engine areas are really big and bulky as you would expect and they look great they have some thrust coming out of the back here with orange studs to represent that and even a little bit of thrust here in the middle with more orange studs to represent that as well there's a pretty large gap here in the back just because that's where this whole thing kind of folds up and into when you wanted to put it in that landed position versus having it down when it's in a flight mode like that or in your like secondary, like most people are gonna end up displaying it like this type of position. The tiled off look of a lot of this is really clean. Lego went for a minimalistic look as far as studs go. Most of the studs are like concentrated on the top of the vehicle. Everything else is pretty much tiled off and it looks so wonderful in that way. The older Grievous Starfighter had a lot sharper edges and was much less tiled off. This one really changes a lot in that respect. I'll be comparing the three Grievous Starfighters. You'll see that better in that video, but that's just something uh, to note here if you're coming from one of the older ones. You have this really nice printed cockpit piece, has a very 
very interesting and unique shape that really fits the Grievous Starfighter though. And to open up the cockpit, you literally just push forward on it, pushes it into place, and you're left with a pretty tight cockpit, to be fair. Like, there's not a lot of space in there. There's a couple of printed tiles, or rather cheese slopes, in there that we've seen in other sets. And like I said, it is a tight space. I took his other two arms off because I feel like if he's flying, he's not going to have all four arms out. Plus, it makes it extremely difficult to fit him in there if you have all four arms out. Although it is doable. There's a nice tiled space at the bottom there that he's going to kind of slide down and in on. And then he can have his arms down on the control panel. I find this kind of a tough thing to do, but you know, fourth, fifth try on here, I am able to get it in pretty easily. And like I said, his arms do fit right down onto the control panel. So it does look like he's actually working the ship and that's nice. Everything closes up right on him. He fits right in there, no problems. Like you can even lift his head up even higher like that and you're still not gonna have any problem fitting him in there. So Grievous does fit in there really well. And you can, like I said, have the other arms on there. It just becomes a little bit much in that space and it makes it look really cluttered versus what it already looks like. So I would say take the other two arms off, but then again, you may have the issue of where to put those arms. So you may wanna leave them on too. Perhaps the killer new feature on this Grievous Starfighter is the way that lightsabers are stored on this set. Like this one actually is a really ingenious way of storing lightsabers. Previous models would have you clip the lightsabers onto something that would go underneath the set. And we will take a look underneath the set in a moment. There's actually a pretty cool little play feature hidden up under there, but it would have you clip your lightsabers under there. And that's a fine way to store them, but they found a better way to do it. And that's actually in these side panels here. So you can actually pull on this or push on it and you pull it back here like this and you actually have this big cavity in there that you can fit a couple of lightsabers in. A really ingenious way to use the space. It's a bit of a tight fit. Sometimes I've been having trouble like with it getting stuck like that, but if you just push it, it's gonna close. We'll try it again on the other side. I'll show you guys exactly what that problem that I seem to be having is. So actually this time, instead of alternating them, I will put them both in side by side like that and we are gonna try to close it, see how it gets stuck. If you just close if you just close it, it's gonna close, right? Like the brute force is gonna make them go in. So maybe not like a hundred percent perfect feature, but it works fine. Like I think that's a great place to store the lightsabers for the set. It does create a bit of a rattle. You can hear that uh, versus when they're not in there, much less rattle. So that's just maybe the one downside of that, but really that's nitpicking and there's no reason to really think that that's necessarily a bad thing. It just works really well like that. And I actually really enjoy that. Maybe another problem with it is when you do have it in this full landed position, like the typical, like correct way, you're not gonna be able to get at those. You actually have to prop it up and then open them up to get your lightsabers back out. And here is the underside of the Grievous Starfighter. Plenty of inverted tiles and things like that to keep everything in place and it's a really sturdy build in that way they really went out of their way to make sure that nothing was going to break on this set at least under most normal circumstances which is great to see you'll notice that there is a single spring-loaded shooter on the set to kind of represent the bomb that this thing can drop i believe they've had that in sets past and basically on the back here you have this piece here that you can push in it's going to push this cheese slope which is in turn going to push it down on the spring-loaded shooter and send it flying bit of an awkward grip on the set for me but hopefully you get the point like i said you're going to push in on this it'll send that flying just like so very easy to do it's a great little play feature on the bottom that i think kids will particularly love is this a good set i think yes i think at the end of the day it's a good set now it does have some bad attributes about it it's definitely overpriced 80 dollars is way too much in my opinion for what we see here especially with the exclusion of a phase two Cody, just not here in the set. Like if that was here, that we may be having a very different conversation here. Let's be very clear. And so the figure selection is a pretty big drawback to this one as well, along with it being overpriced. Other than that, I mean, this is a wonderful Grievous Starfighter build. You won't be disappointed in the build. Like it's, it's a good one. I like the way that it looks, right? Like it's got nice play features, got nice storage for your lightsabers. Grievous fits right into his cockpit. It has a very accurate landing system. Like everything's good about it. It just comes down to the fact that this thing costs 80 bucks and doesn't include an accurate Obi-Wan Kenobi minifigure at the very least. Like that's the bare minimum and they didn't meet that. So that ultimately is where I end up on this set. It's just lacking. If you don't own a Grievous Starfighter, if you're new to collecting Lego Star Wars, as I know maybe a lot of you are, maybe this is worth picking up for you because it is probably the best Grievous Starfighter. Like it's a really good build ultimately. And I think that that's worth saying. So if you're new to the hobby, like go for it, man. Maybe wait for it to go on sale though. Let's not, let's not buy this at full price. 80 bucks, you're wasting your money. I think save some money. Yeah, basically, if you wait for this to go on sale, uh, something like this at 80 bucks will typically go on sale for like 60 bucks or $64. And then you're getting a much 
much better price. Or if you even hold out very long, you could get this on clearance pricing, which could bring the price down to like 40 bucks for you. And then, then you're looking at a real good value for a set and you're going to have a grand old time. You wouldn't feel bad about buying it at all, right? So I think at $80, you feel bad. At 64 bucks, you feel all right, we did it, we, we passed. And if you, if you ever find it for half off at 40, you're like, all right, let's buy two of them, you know, that type of mentality. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. If you guys enjoyed the video, like is always appreciated. If you're new channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more of my future LEGO Star Wars videos. You can check out more LEGO Star Wars 2020 set reviews on the end screen now. Uh -huh.